Hello and welcome to Wake Up and Smell the Mic S&P 500 review for Wednesday, February 8th, 2023. It's now 5.48 a.m. Central Time. We start off in the S&P 500 daily chart into Mark. Looking back to end of October 21, I'll zoom into the current area now. The S&P 500 daily chart has printed the sequential and combo cell setup 12 recycle count. And to negate that for end of day today on the 8th, there must be a close below 4179.76 for the price flip to the buy setup count 1. And price in the pre-market hours for the S&P 500 at 5.51 a.m. Central Time is 41.48. And the combo and sequential by TDST and relative retracement up 1 were qualified on yesterday's bar. So to get the confirmation bar for today on the 8th, there must be an open higher than this close on the 7th and tick higher intraday higher than this high on the 3rd and then close above the close for the 7th on today, end of day on the 8th. And those two levels will become qualified and confirmed. And the propulsion momentum up for 50% and 100% was pennies away from getting qualified. Also, the momentum up levels 41.65.87. And the close was 41.64, not exactly pennies, but a dollar or so. And the levels in danger of becoming qualified today if price heads south would be first this trend factor down one, and the conversion line is right above it. After that would be the trend factor disqualified down to at that level and the baseline right here is protecting that along with the relative retracement disqualified up one which if it does not become qualified and confirmed today will still be support and right under that disqualified down to is the sell TDST levels for combo and sequential and a close under those levels today will qualify everything that I just mentioned and would go a long way for making me lighten up more longs. Until then we have to give the S&P price and all the FOMOs and MOMOs the benefit of the doubt to see if they can push this higher, meaning S&P price. And if we do get the confirmation bars by doing all that I mentioned and getting above this high is part of that, if it keeps going and gets a tick higher than this high on the second then the megaphone cell 7 end count will sh shift over and this blue line will extend further and now I switched off some of the other indicators and switched on lines so we can see these ongoing supply lines and demand lines here so this first ongoing supply line is now at 4171.88 for today and this one right above it is at 4195.17 for today and it looks like price would have to open above this one first 4171.88 to have any chance of getting that 
qualified for today so it would have to open above that and then close above it and it could become qualified if it does not open above it then it would have to get above it and have a larger range than this range on the seventh so subtract the high and the low add it to the high and that's how high the range would have to be for today on the eighth same thing with this ongoing supply line too and this ongoing demand line here is at 4110.10 to start the day today and a close under that for today will qualify this ongoing demand line and if that happens for end of day today and thinking about thinking about lightening up on longs will be the order of the day and until these ongoing supply lines get qualified possibly confirmed in other words when they turn solid green like down here these disqualified supply lines still tell us that we should be thinking about fading the market and here's a pulled back view with all indicators showing and it looks like if we do tick higher than this intraday high over here on the second that this wave up projection for wave up five will extend further out to wherever that happens whatever day that happens on I should say and to reiterate the mark uses the highs and lows to calculate that from back here we won't get into the calculations after this two printed here and my calculations use opens and closes and that levels at 4204.90 we'll look at that in the big board the CBOE total put call ratio chart seems to be working correctly these days and it looks like it nailed the bottom line here at about negative 150 we use the scale over here on the left and it started ticking up as you can see but did not make it above its signal line yet you can see the up and down we've been having the last couple of days so if that makes it back above its signal line and starts heading up and that means more protection is being sought than calls and the Dixie dollar index shows that the propulsion 50% and 100% momentum up could become qualified with a close above that level for end of day today on the 8th and that does not look like it will happen as the dollar in the pre-market hours is at almost exactly 103 here and in the DIM directional movement index the ADX shows no indication of a trend and the DMI plus is going horizontal yesterday and the DMI minus is still on a downward trajectory QQE as we know crossed above the slow moving QQE so the fast in blue went above the slow in gold and that happened at a low level so we pay more attention to that when it happens under 50 and it looks like it happened in the 30 range somewhere 36 37 and because of that dollar weakness gold is having a nice run in the pre-market hours so that worked out well buying gold when dollar made it 
near 103.50 or so. We bought some, unfortunately not a lot, as I thought that the dollar might make it up into that range, up to maybe 104, 105. See the previous videos for the dollar update. The S&P 500 support and resistance levels big board chart shows the gray areas at the weekly broadening top and dashed red and the pivot point. And price in the pre-market hours for the S&P 500 at 6.34 a.m. Central Time is 41.53. And support to the downside takes a big jump first down to the ongoing demand line for the daily chart. Then S1 is right there and the daily conversion line bumped up nicely to 4104.37. And to the upside it takes another big jump up to the ongoing supply line for the daily chart here at 41.72 approximately then the uptrend line from 6.16.2022 and the daily Bollinger Band upper band 41.89 and the NDXT lagging line close is getting very close to the NDXT up target downtrend line here and there's the level to the top of the daily diamond topics and the New York traditional McClellan breath oscillator to get back to zero would require 310 advancers over decliners to get back to zero so that and YSE traditional McClellan breath oscillator is below zero a little bit. And we're getting close enough to the 4200 zone that I feel I should explain this horizontal support and top of the super bullish wedge both from 5, 10, 20, 21. So we'll go take a look at that. And here's the S&P 500 daily downtrend line chart. And a lot of those downtrend lines are now defunct, you would think. I don't think we're ever going to go back and see where, where those are at today. But the one here, you can see this brown angled line here. I just added it. And that goes back to early May here. You can see where it's anchored here along with the brown horizontal lines. And that's the top of the super bullish wedge pattern, that very top one. And this line here is the bottom leg of that super bullish wedge pattern. And its technical name is a right angled and descending broadening pattern here. And this is the area where the Fed should have started doing a little bit of tightening and started realizing that what they've done in the fiscal side too is going to bring on some pretty severe re inflation and that didn't happen so markets took this a lot further and this is the spot on the weekly chart where I say just put your thumb over this here is that is considered illegitimate in my eyes so you can see the top horizontal line is anchored at the very top of this candle and then I have another one underneath it a brown line anchored at the close up here of these two candles so it gives us a little zone over here that you can see give or take a few points and you can see that I really thought that was it that you know the Fed's going to start tightening and markets took a drop down but then it came back up 
and you can see it was resistance here and then it had a whipsaw and that's when I thought that's really it and uh, yeah the rest is history but you can see this lone candle there we're using that for the anchor at the bottom line of the super bullish wedge pattern or right angled and descending broadening pattern and you can see the top lines were revisited several times you can see it here and yeah it went crazy around up and down here but that's that extreme volatility regime back in the 22 same thing here and you can see another whipsaw here a little bit of support and then a fallout so it's still considered in my eyes as support and resistance and in this day and age it will become resistance hey break through that and I'm sure it will eventually but break through that in the coming week or so weeks and then it's up to the top of the right angled and ascending broadening pattern here and you can see we've been playing this around the 3900 zone and that and uh, yeah it looks like it had another three candles in a row for upside and then a little pull back so it's still a buying opportunity if it can keep pulling back a little bit maybe to some of these lines here this is a downtrend line that's anchored at the bottom of that candle here where we anchored the bottom of the super bullish wedge bottom here and we extended that out and that has been pretty good support and resistance also so that's the le legitimate line and going back to that would be a buying opportunity and then you can see another horizontal support line here where we thought it was going to give out here and just fall off the face of the earth and the Fed had different ideas both legitimate support and resistance lines still to this day yeah you can see the horizontal line had a nice support and resistance zone here during that extreme volatility era same thing here here it had that jump up above it here and then fell out those both of those lines there that downtrend and the horizontal and right here the horizontal was pretty good resistance here too and then it took a big leg up now so let's see if it can be support now if not then maybe it'll make it down to this downtrend line and then I would say that would be a buying opportunity down here and here's the daily horizontal support 4068 and that downtrend line 4045 have a great day